life is filled with little bumps. Called the wrist twist steering control, it was developed for Mercury by ex-missile engineer Bob Rump. Do you remember when cars were more metal than microchips and safety took a back seat to style? From impaling hood ornaments to neck-hugging seat belts, these relics once graced our roads, leaving a trail of danger and innovation. Why did automakers experiment with neck seat belts and what happened to those menacing hood ornaments? Join us on this nostalgic ride through 13 dangerous old car features that no longer exist. Number 1. Water Balloon Bumpers Water balloon bumpers, an unconventional safety feature, splashed the automotive world during the mid-20th century. In their quest to enhance crash safety, manufacturers decided to fill car bumpers with water. The idea was simple. The water-filled bumpers would absorb energy upon impact, cushioning the blow and protecting passengers. Around the 1950s, these watery bumpers began to appear on some cars. The concept seemed promising, especially given the rising concern about vehicle safety. The public's reaction was a mix of curiosity and skepticism. Imagine seeing a car with what looked like giant water balloons attached to its front and rear. Some manufacturers, including Ford, Chrysler, and General Motors, experimented with this novel approach. Drivers wondered if these water-filled bumpers would revolutionize safety on the roads. Despite good intentions, water balloon bumpers had significant drawbacks. The rubber or plastic material used for these bumpers was only sometimes robust. In real-world collisions, they often ruptured, leaking water and leaving the car vulnerable. While water absorbs energy, it couldn't match the protective capabilities of modern materials like crumple zones. In high-speed crashes, water-filled bumpers failed to provide adequate protection. As crash safety research advanced, it became clear that water balloon bumpers were more gimmick than effective safety measure. By the 1970s, they had disappeared mainly from new car designs. Manufacturers shifted focus to better engineered safety features, leaving behind the watery experiment. As the era of water-filled bumpers faded, what other daring innovations attempted to reshape driving? The wrist twist swivel system beckons, offering a glimpse into automotive experimentation. Number 2. The Wrist Twist Swivel System During the 1960s, an experimental automotive innovation, the Wrist Twist Swivel System, surfaced as a potential revolution in driving dynamics. Ford's Mercury brand implemented this system in their Park Lane convertibles, substituting the conventional steering wheel with two rotating dials resembling handlebars. Despite initial intrigue, the public reacted with skepticism. Steering through twistable dials seem more like a gimmick than a practical advancement. The system aimed to enhance comfort and intuition in steering, allowing the steering column to tilt upward for easier entry and descent to lap level once seated, flanked by armrests for support. Moreover, it offered an unobstructed view of the instrument panel, eliminating the rim's interference with forward vision. However, several factors contributed to its demise. Firstly, drivers found the wrist twist system bewildering, requiring mental effort to adjust to thumb rings and maintain loose hand positions. Additionally, the system lacked the tactile feedback necessary for safe driving, leading to confusion and potential hazards on the road. Safety concerns also arose due to the absence of a padded rim, leaving heads and knees vulnerable during crashes. Despite the potential for improvement with features like a telescoping column, the system was ultimately abandoned by the 1970s. Engineers recognized that while the wrist twist swivel system represented a daring experiment, the traditional steering wheel, the oldest invention in automotive history, remained unmatched in practicality and safety. Number 3. Neck Seat Belts During the 1960s, car manufacturers entertained the idea of neck seat belts, aiming to restrain the head to prevent whiplash during accidents directly. This speculative concept skipped the traditional chest and lap restraints, focusing solely on the vulnerable link between the head and body. It was a daring experiment envisioning a seat belt snugly embracing the neck akin to a scarf. Despite the audacity of the idea, neck seat belts never made it to the mainstream. They remained obscure like safety agents shrouded in secrecy. Companies like Ford, General Motors, and others dabbled with these prototypes, but the public needed to be aware of this potential revolution in safety. However, neck seat belts posed significant dangers. 
While they aim to mitigate whiplash, they also introduce their risk. Sudden stops could lead to strain and injury as the head remained restrained, putting pressure on the neck muscles. Moreover, these prototypes needed real-world testing, leaving questions unanswered about their efficacy in saving lives or potentially causing harm. By the 1970s, neck seat belts vanished from consideration, perhaps deemed ahead of their time or too risky for widespread adoption. Today, the standard remains chest and lap belts, leaving the neck unrestricted during travel. Let's explore how the advent of non-collapsible steering columns marked a revolutionary shift in automotive safety. Number 4. Non-Collapsible Steering Columns Before the late 1960s, automobiles were equipped with non-collapsible steering columns, rigid structures connecting the steering wheel to the wheels on the ground. Despite their long-standing presence since the inception of automobiles, the public largely overlooked these components until accidents brought their dangers to light. The unyielding nature of these columns pose significant risk to drivers in the event of a collision. Companies such as Ford, Chevrolet, and Chrysler, among others, incorporated these rigid columns into their vehicles. The primary peril stemmed from the lack of flexibility. During a crash, the force of the impact could propel the steering column forward, potentially impaling the driver and causing severe injuries or fatalities. Unlike modern collapsible columns, these early designs lacked any mechanism for energy absorption, offering no buffer to mitigate the impact severity. In response to mounting safety concerns, General Motors took a pivotal step in 1967 by introducing the first collapsible steering columns. These innovative designs could collapse upon impact, significantly reducing the risk of impalement and prioritizing driver safety. Subsequently, other manufacturers followed suit, marking the end of the era of rigid steering columns as the automotive industry embraced safer alternatives. Number 5. Swing Away Steering Wheels Swing Away Steering Wheels, a peculiar innovation emerging in the mid-20th century, sought to revolutionize driver comfort and entry convenience. Introduced in 1961 by Ford, these devices were initially available as an option for models like the Thunderbird. They aim to facilitate a seamless entry experience, offering a whimsical twist where the steering wheel gracefully swung away upon the driver's approach, creating an unobstructed path for entry. This innovative concept garnered significant intrigue among drivers, solving the age-old struggle of squeezing into tight parking spaces. While Ford was in charge of implementing swing-away steering wheels, other manufacturers also experimented with similar features during this period. However, swing-away steering wheels pose significant safety concerns despite the initial enthusiasm. These mechanisms behind these devices were prone to mechanical issues, occasionally failing to return the wheel to its original position after use, leaving drivers puzzled or even momentarily trapped. Moreover, the potential for accidental movement during driving presented a considerable risk, compromising the safety of the driver and passengers. As the 1970s approached, the allure of swing-away steering wheels began to fade. Safety considerations ultimately outweighed the convenience they offered, prompting manufacturers to shift their focus towards more reliable and secure features. Consequently, the era of swing-away steering wheels ended, marking a transition towards safer and more dependable automotive innovations. As swing-away steering wheels faded, safety took precedence. But what of pop-out windshields, another relic of innovation? Did they succumb to safety concerns as well? Number 6. Pop-out windshields During the mid-20th century, a curious relic of automotive history emerged as pop-out windshields. In 1948, the Tucker Automobile introduced these pop-out laminate glass windshields produced by Livy Owens Ford, serving as escape hatches for passengers. Utilizing a spongy rubber gasket, these windshields could be popped out in one whole piece, aiming to allow occupants a safe exit from wrecked vehicles. Initially, drivers were intrigued by this safety feature, envisioning surviving a crash and calmly popping out the windshield like a champagne cork. While other manufacturers took notice, Tucker led the way in popularizing this innovation. However, as with any new technology, there were inherent dangers. Firstly, during severe collisions, the sudden departure of the windshield could propel occupants outward, posing an ejection risk. Instead of shattering, 
occupants' wrists being propelled through the very glass meant to protect them, resembling human cannonballs. Despite the initial fascination, safety concerns mounted. By the 1950s, panoramic curved windshields stole the spotlight, offering improved visibility without the risk of ejection. As safety standards evolved, the Motor Vehicle Safety Act instituted new regulations, signaling the end of the pop-out windshield era. Gradually, these once innovative safety features faded into obscurity, leaving behind memories of a quirky yet ultimately impractical safety dance in automotive history. Number 7. Metal Dashboards Metal dashboards, relics from the automotive past, once adorned cars like Stern Guardians. Back in the early days of automobiles, dashboards were straightforward. Metal panels housing essential gauges and switches. No frills, no fuss. These unyielding dashboards were as rigid as the cars themselves. Imagine sitting behind a metal dashboard. No soft padding, just cold steel. Drivers didn't complain much. They were too busy marveling at the novelty of motorized travel. Companies like Ford, Chevrolet, and Dodge embraced these metallic dashboards. However, despite their initial acceptance, metal dashboards posed significant dangers. In a collision, occupants faced a brutal reality. Unyielding as a blacksmith's anvil, the metal dashboard could become a lethal weapon. Heads, knees, and chests collided with unforgiving force. Unlike today's cushion dashboards, these metal counterparts lacked any safety padding. No foam, no airbags, just raw steel. By the 1960s, safety concerns had gained traction. Engineers realized that metal dashboards were more foe than friend. Crash tests revealed the grim consequences. So manufacturers began adding padding, vinyl covers, and safety features. The bare metal dashboards disappeared as the industry prioritized safety over aesthetics. As metal dashboards yielded to safety concerns, what new safety measures awaited drivers beyond the era of unyielding steel? Let's explore lap seat belts. Number 8. Lap Waist Seat Belts In the 1960s, the automotive industry introduced lap waist seat belts, marking a pivotal moment in vehicle safety. These early seat belts, primarily consisting of a simple lap belt across the waist, aim to prevent passengers from being ejected through windshields during sudden stops or accidents. However, the public's reaction to these new safety features was mixed. While some drivers and passengers accepted them as potential lifesavers, others viewed them as a cumbersome addition to their driving experience. Companies such as Ford, Chevrolet, and others were among the first to offer these basic lap belts in their vehicles. Despite their intended purpose, lap belts posed significant dangers. They left the upper body and head vulnerable to impact in a collision, as they did not protect the waist. This incomplete restraint system meant that passengers could still suffer severe injuries from colliding with dashboards, steering wheels, or windshields during accidents. Recognizing these flaws, engineers and safety experts pushed for advancements in seatbelt design. By the 1970s, safety standards had evolved, leading to the introduction of shoulder belts. These diagonal straps provided additional protection by securing the upper body and the lap offering comprehensive restraint during crashes. As a result, combined lap and shoulder belts became the new standard in vehicle safety, significantly reducing the risk of injuries and fatalities in accidents. Ultimately, introducing these improved seatbelt designs marked the end of the era for lap waist seatbelts, as they were gradually phased out in favor of more effective safety restraints. Number 9. The Absence of Crumple Zones in automotive history, crumple zones unveil a narrative of evolution and safety. In the early days of automobiles, circa the 1960s, vehicles were characterized by robust, unyielding frames reminiscent of medieval fortresses on wheels. However, they lacked the crucial safety feature we know as crumple zones. These zones, introduced later, were strategically engineered to deform during collisions, effectively absorbing energy and mitigating the impact on passengers. Initially, the public remained largely indifferent to the absence of crumple zones, with safety being a peripheral concern rather than a central focus. Major automotive manufacturers like Ford and Chevrolet produced vehicles with solid frames, oblivious to the impending danger posed by the lack of safety measures. 
The absence of crumple zones rendered vehicles dangerously susceptible to the direct impact of collisions. Without the capacity to absorb crash energy, occupants face the full force of collisions, often resulting in severe injuries such as broken bones and concussions. Recognizing the urgent need for enhanced safety measures, engineers spearheaded a shift in design philosophy during the 1970s. This pivotal period saw the introduction of deformable zones, front, rear, and sides, that sacrificed structural integrity to safeguard lives. By incorporating crumple zones into vehicle design, the automotive industry took a significant stride towards prioritizing passenger safety and reducing the severity of injuries sustained in accidents. Number 10. Unsafe Fuel Tanks In the 1970s, the automotive industry introduced a dark chapter in its history with the emergence of unsafe fuel tanks epitomized by the Ford Pinto. Initially designed as a compact car to rival imports, the Pinto concealed a fatal flaw, its fuel tank placement behind the rear axle. Despite this design flaw, drivers embraced the Pinto, oblivious to the potential danger lurking beneath its sleek exterior. However, tragedy struck when rear-end collisions caused the Pinto's fuel tank to crumple like a soda can, spilling gasoline and igniting infernos that turned the car into a fireball. The public's ignorance was shattered as the grim reality of Pinto's danger came to light. Ford, motivated by cost-cutting measures, knowingly prioritized profits over safety as evidenced by the infamous Pinto Memo, which exposed the company's willingness to settle lawsuits rather than rectify the situation. The consequences were dire, with 27 fatalities attributed to Pinto fires and numerous others suffering severe burns. Legal battles ensued, with Ford facing criminal charges and substantial civil damages, tarnishing the company's reputation and transforming the Pinto into a symbol of corporate negligence. As safety standards evolved and crumple zones became standard practice, the Pinto era ended by the late 1970s. As the flames of corporate negligence engulfed the Pinto, could technology prevent such tragedies? ABS emerged, promising safer roads ahead. Number 11, no anti-lock brakes. Anti-lock brakes, or ABS, emerged as a pivotal safety innovation with roots tracing back to the 1950s. Initially finding utility in aviation and railway industries to prevent wheel lockup during braking, ABS technology gradually became the automotive sphere. In 1953, Mercedes-Benz patented a system by Hans Scherenberg, marking the beginning of ABS implementation in cars. The innovation soon crossed borders, with American automakers such as Chrysler, Ford, and GM introducing their versions. Even Japanese manufacturers like Toyota and Nissan joined the fray, incorporating ABS into their vehicle models. Initially, the absence of ABS poised significant dangers, particularly the risk of wheel lockup during abrupt braking maneuvers. This lack of control could result in hazardous situations, especially on slippery surfaces like icy roads. Moreover, the initial cost of ABS technology presented a challenge making it a luxury primarily accessible to high-end vehicles. However, advancements have seen ABS evolve into a digital marvel equipped with sophisticated sensors and processors to enhance braking precision. The significance of ABS became further highlighted as regulatory bodies like the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration mandated its inclusion alongside stability control in all passenger vehicles. Number 12, hood ornaments. In the early 20th century, hood ornaments emerged as a means for car manufacturers to showcase their brand identity. These decorative sculptures adorned the front of automobiles, serving as eye-catching embellishments that sparked conversations among onlookers. Rolls-Royce, renowned for its luxury, notably introduced the iconic spirit of ecstasy in the 1910s. This elegant figurine, depicting a graceful lady leaning forward with windswept robes, became synonymous with opulence. Various companies followed suit, with Packard's Goddess of Speed, Cadillac's Wreath and Crest, and Lincoln's Four-Pointed Star conveying their narrative. Drivers admired these hood ornaments as badges and statements of style and identity. Dodge, for instance, 
opted for a bold approach with its charging ram ornament, symbolizing the resilience associated with the bighorn sheep and Dodge drivers alike. However, the allure of these ornaments was overshadowed by their potential danger. Elegant shapes such as wings, animals, and goddesses posed a significant impalement risk in accidents, turning into lethal projectiles. Pedestrians faced the grim possibility of being impaled by these ornaments, prompting safety concerns and regulatory intervention. By the 1970s, pedestrian safety became a paramount concern, leading to the implementation of regulations mandating collapsible hoods and blunter designs. Consequently, hood ornaments gradually faded from prominence, with many designs being retracted into the hood itself to mitigate hazards. While a few brands still retain their ornamental emblems, most modern cars opt for more discreet badge placements, marking the end of an era defined by these gleaming sculptures on car hoods. As hood ornaments phased out for safety, what other overlooked safety features transform driving? Let's discover the lack of headrests. Number 13, lack of headrests. Headrests were a rarity in the early days of automobiles, with cars lacking cushion support for weary heads. It was in the late 1960s that headrests gained prominence, primarily introduced to prevent whiplash injuries during rear-end collisions. Initially, drivers didn't prioritize headrests, focusing more on factors like horsepower and chrome accents. However, the Swedish automaker Volvo took the lead in 1968 by making headrests standard equipment, prompting other manufacturers to follow suit. The absence of headrests posed significant dangers. Without them, passengers faced increased risk during rear-end crashes, experiencing the double whammy of their bodies being pushed forward. At the same time, their heads snap backwards, leading to potential whiplash injuries and strain on neck muscles and ligaments. Neck vulnerability was a common concern as collisions could cause the unsupported head to swing wildly, further increasing the likelihood of injury. As safety standards evolved through the 1970s, headrests became mandatory automobile features. They transitioned from being perceived as mere comfort amenities to essential life-saving components. Today, headrests are ubiquitous in vehicles, effectively cradling passengers' heads to reduce the risk of injury during accidents. Additionally, the forward tilt of headrests aligned with the spine's natural curve, further enhancing their effectiveness in improving passenger safety.